Traditionally, there was the recognition of at least the problem that the people seem to have the right to resist unjust laws, that not everything legal is just. The majoritarian calculus by sleight of hand simply makes the idea of injustice disappear. Nothing is unjust that is done by the rulers because the rule itself is just since it's based on a neutral majority. So it actually erases or subtracts from the equation the substantive issue of justice and injustice and therefore the substantive and legitimate basis for resistance. As Schmidt puts it, by conceptual necessity then, legal power simply can no longer do injustice. You see, it's almost defined as always just, so there is nothing to resist. There's no such thing as an unjust use of power and no such thing as an unjust majority on this view. Another way of stating the problem is that the consequence is that you have no right to resist the majority even when they suddenly turn on you and treat you as an enemy of the state or enemy of the people. Quote, if legality and illegality can be arbitrarily at the disposal of the majority, Schmidt writes, then the majority can, above all, declare their domestic competitors illegal. Whoever controls 51% would be able legally to render the remaining 49% illegal. The majority would be permitted to use legal means to close the door to legality through which they themselves entered and to treat partisan opponents like common criminals who are then perhaps reduced to kicking their boots against the locked door. You certainly get the sense when reading that passage, or at least I do, that Schmidt is warning against this kind of outcome, telling the supporters of neutrality that they're perhaps inadvertently welcoming this terrible result when 51% of the people declare war on 49%, with no legal recourse for the minority group and no principle of justice moderating the majority.